Birmingham ministers are taking their message out of the church and onto the streets of Birmingham. They are hoping a new coalition will help stop the violence. Yeah, I love you too. George Dickerson has been a cab driver in Birmingham for over 20 years now. He and other drivers have definitely seen their share of violence. The crime is really getting outrageous because of drugs, uh, uh, blinging, uh, you know what I mean by blinging, by jewelry and stuff like that. When you don't teach your children basically about how to treat each other, how to love one another. It makes me worried about driving a cab. Because <laughs> we never know who we're picking up or where we're going or what they got in store for us. That's why area ministers from a thousand different churches and denominations in Birmingham are taking part in a ceasefire ecumenical coalition. Their message stop the killing, to stop killing our dreams, and stop killing our hope, and to stop killing our future. Birmingham is one of the most dangerous places to live, and we are standing together in oneness to declare that must change. According to Birmingham police, homicides are up 28 percent over last year. We are concerned about the fact that our murder rate is at a significant level that we uh, in 2006 are experiencing murder rates that are above even last year, which was the second highest in the city's history. We long to see the day when the peace of Jesus Christ will reign over our community. God is it's the key to make everything work out all right. We've got you covered in Birmingham. Jamel Major, NBC 13 News. Well, many people say it's a danger to school children, but now improvements are underway to make sure that this busy intersection remains safe. This was two months before they were killed. Papa was 84 and my mom was 78. Allison Knight knows all too well how dangerous traffic at this Highway 21 Cedars Road intersection can be. This is where her grandparents were killed a few years ago. During the wintertime, it's a really bad place because the sun is in your eyes going down 21. You can't see to cross. A flashing yellow caution light warns drivers to slow down. But these Munford High School students say during periods of heavy traffic, before and after school, parents and bus drivers have trouble crossing the highway safely. My biggest worry is accidents, of course, you know, people who are impatient. I'm never to school on time because of the traffic. Concerns that have gotten the attention of Alabama Department of Transportation officials. This construction project is currently underway, where a right turn lane onto Cedars Road is being added to the northbound side of Highway 21. Drivers turning off Cedars onto the northbound lane of 21 will have a merging lane. Crews are also constructing a left turn lane towards the school for those traveling southbound on 21. It's chaos in the mornings, in the afternoons. It's um, The buses line up and we have traffic backed all the way up to the elementary school. However, some engineers say traffic congestion is only a concern in the morning and afternoons, so the intersection doesn't warrant a traffic light. I hope it doesn't take a close call, you know, just somebody, a death in the school or anything to um, for them to put a traffic light up. We've got you covered in Munford. Jamel Major, NBC 13 News. For Carrie Davis, an employee at Waste Recycling in Anniston, it was a typical day at work. She was sorting out recyclable material when she stumbled across something unusual. I picked it up. I said, Monopoly money. I thought that's what it was. <laughs> and uh, and I looked at it. I started to throw it. And it, I looked at it. I said, well, I said, it's got the president on it. And I looked on those, I said, it's real money, it's just old. $2,975 in cash, tucked in a folded envelope. And then I found, here the box. At the box it was in. And it was in there just like that, leaning over to the side. Davis says she remembered receiving several loads of boxes and trash from Betty Heinzhurst. Heinzhurst's husband died from Alzheimer's disease about five years ago, and she recently moved to Jacksonville. She had just cleaned out her house in Anniston, and the money was from her husband's disability payments. It had been missing since 1985. It had gotten mixed in with old paperwork and receipts. Davis says when she discovered it, she knew she had to contact Heinhurst immediately. The only problem, she didn't know her last name. She says she checked with her office manager, who helped her do a quick search through the phone book. That's when they came across one of Heinz Hurst's uncles, who gave them her number. Hi, girl. Hey. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. You okay? 
When Heinhurst arrived to pick up her lost money, she says she was shocked. She had no clue valuables were inside the boxes. I would have never dreamed that the money would be at this salvage place. In fact, truly, I had forgotten about the money. But she was thankful for Davis, who had been so honest in returning her money. She did have it in her pocket, and she could have kept it there, and I would have never known. I saw the tears, but when I saw her face, that, that, that just made it all for me. We've got you covered in Anniston. Jamel Major, NBC 13 News.